Now this is the team I'll likely be overhyping this year. With some great new pickups, the uprising are back at better than ever. But can they become a top tier team or sink to mediocrity as is tradition with the uprising? Let's see. Starting with the DPS, these guys are at the start of the show. They retained their star DPS, Flaltine, picked up a very promising rookie hitscan out of contenders in Victoria, and picked up the GOAT Tracer out of retirement from the San Francisco Shock, Striker. These guys have potential. Obviously Striker is the star of the show here. While he hasn't been in the spotlight for a while, we all know what he's capable of. He absolutely dominated the league on Tracer in seasons 1 and 3, and is a great flanker specialist and mid-range hitscan. I really think if Tracer is as meta as expected, he'll be a menace. You kind of have to put him in the elite tier of Tracer players, despite not seeing him play for a while. Then there's Victoria, who is a pretty underrated player. He was fantastic in contenders and has a lot of potential, as he only started playing last year. While I don't rate him as particularly top tier right now, he can definitely tango with the rest of the players in his tier like Shockwave, Hisu, and even Glister. I'm even I'm really excited to see him play. And Valentine is still a very solid player. I'm not as high on him as others, but he's definitely average at the very least. I rate him about the same tier as Aldo and Assassin at least. Overall, I think this DPS line is like a 7.5 out of 10. Striker coming back is huge for this team. Tracer will pretty much never not be strong, and he already has a great Cassidy, Hanzo, Reaper, and other good hitscans as well. And Valentine's Victoria do need some time to develop, but they are a fantastic talent with a lot of potential. Next up, the tanks. We have Itzal, a promising rookie prospect from Uprising Academy, Marvel, a veteran out of the Soul Dynasty, and Punk, retained from last year after he popped off. Honestly, this is a pretty solid tank lineup. I'm not very high in Marvel if I'm being honest, people hype him up as this insane hyperflex because he's played both roles but frankly, his main tank play seems to have suffered because of it. I don't think his diva and Zarya are really that good. However his talent is pretty undeniable, he's an elite sigma and has a good Rhine in my eyes, but I can't help but think how he's a bit washed. It's always a pretty promising prospect to me, he has a very good wrecking ball in Winston, so his playstyle should translate well to the new Doomfist who seems to be strong so I think he could be great heading into the new season. And while I think his Ryan still needs work, it's not a total throw pick. Then Punk really impressed me last year. I don't think he's mega top tier or anything, but he's very solid. I think he's on that A tier of off tanks alongside Pizzy, Piggy, Kalios, Faust, and Hotba. He's definitely a great player, but I'll have to give this tank line a 6.5. While I think individually the players are solid and can compete with the rest of the league to a good degree, having three tanks in a one tank slot will never not be weird for me. I hope they can settle into one player over the course of this season, as I think constantly rotating players in between maps is a very tough thing to do and build synergy around. Either one of these guys should be solid though. Next, the support line. They have retained Faith after a very strong showing last year in my opinion. Crimso after a breakout year on the Houston Outlaws and MCD after getting kicked out of Hongzo for being a racist prick despite being good at fuck support. This is honestly a really solid support line. I regard Faith very highly, I think he was really good on the Brig and Mercy, and is on the A tier of, flick of main support. Crimson I think is a bit overrated, but he's definitely really solid. He was above average last year on pretty much every hero, he is a very well rounded player. MCD is also pretty solid, again he's never impressed me all that much, but he was probably like the third best player on this park, and performed well even when the team was underperforming. Overall a really well rounded support line, with players that complement each other, and have a lot of potential. I'm hoping Faith can show what he's made of with a better team around him. I'll give these guys an 8. It's a pretty high rating, but I think this is above average support line in NA, and can compete with the best, and I think this is probably the best part of the team. Finally, the coaching, and this is probably the worst team of the, part of the team for me. They retained their coaching staff from last year, and honestly, I'm not that big a fan. Boston should have been much more successful than they were last year on paper. They picked up most of World Game Star Penis, which won a season of Korean contenders, but the team would go on to go 7 and 9 and get swept by Vancouver, the worst team in NA. Honestly an embarrassment on their part. A lot of people like Baroy, but I don't really see the hype. He's never had especially good results. I hope they can pull it together because on paper this roster is an improvement over last year, but again they didn't do much with the promising roster last year. I'll give these guys like a 4 or 5. I get nom flashbacks getting hyped on last year, but then seeing them have zero plan B. Overall though, this roster does have a lot of promise. On paper, they should have upgraded every position, have a ton of new and veteran talent mixed together that, in theory, should pound. But Boston can very well be mediocre again. And again, their only Tracer player in history, Striker, is back, and maybe he can carry them to an upper half finish for the second time. 
I personally have them finishing around 6 to 9 in the standings. I could see them going lower or higher depending on momentum swings, as Stryker and the rest of the team is a very emotional player. But I don't think a lineup of Stryker, Victoria, Punk, Crimzo, or Faith can do that badly. Thanks for watching, and remember to hit like and subscribe for more. I upload nearly daily Overwatch League content, and I'm trying to hit a thousand subs by season 5, so any subscription helps greatly. Thanks.